While Arjun was away, Team Arjun came to play. All the cats out of the bag now, folks. But we're still here bringing you our favorite and most importantly, actionable insights to Arjun's newest book, Profit First for Lawyers. We're going to help you accelerate your law firm's growth so that you can experience more profit in every aspect of your life. We're also going to be providing some behind the scenes footage at what it's really like to work with Arjun Robbins. So put your BS aside for the next few minutes and put yourself, your family, your firm, and your profit first. Well, hey there, folks. Did you miss us? Well, welcome back to the Profit First for Lawyers podcast. I'm your host, Carly, and you're in luck because today I'm here to share two very exciting things. First up, a very special announcement. Drum roll, please. Profit First for Lawyers is coming back with a season two. That's right, folks. Even more great content will be coming your way very soon. We're going to continue bringing you the actionable insights that you've been looking forward to that will make your law firm more profitable. So hit that button to like and subscribe and be prepared for new episodes soon. And secondly, we didn't want to leave you hanging while you wait for new episodes. So today, I'm kicking off a special bonus two-part series for you based on an interview that Arjun gave when he was invited to be a guest on the Managing Partners podcast. Now, this interview was so packed full of great information delivered only in that special way that Arjun can that it was split up into two highly profitable, actionable, insightful episodes that will help your law firm be more profitable. So here's part one. In this episode, you're going to learn some marketing tips that will help you to identify your ideal avatar. You're going to learn why you should stop thinking of yourself as a lawyer and start thinking of yourself as an entrepreneur who happens to sell legal services. And you're going to hear Arjun get pretty fired up about why you have an ethical responsibility to run a profitable law firm. This is a really good one, folks. So hang on to your hats and prepare for a ride. Let's roll the clip. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Managing Partners Podcast. This is Kevin Daisy here, always trying to bring you the best guests and best information. And today, I have the all-famous R. John Robbins on the show. R. John, welcome. Hey, Kevin. How are you? I've listened to the show for a while here. I'm glad to finally be on. Thank you for having me. Well, you know, we had to pull some strings, but uh, we were able to get uh, get you a spot. So I, I go where my team tells me to go. I do what my team tells me to do. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. So everyone tuning in, attorneys, if you don't know R. John, I'd be shocked, but um, I like to pretend as if you may not. So I want to have uh, R. John give a little bit of a background on himself, um, where he is now and what he's up to and, and how he got there. So I always like a good story. Um, and so, uh, we'll start with that one second before that, um, our John, you can go to how to manage.com. If you're listening on audio is how to manage.com. You can see our John's companies and, and check him out. And we'll get into more of that in just a moment and, and dive deep into, uh, how he helps law firms grow and scale. So our John, give us a little background on yourself, sir. Uh, well, how far back do you want me to go? I'll, I'll tell you today how to manage a small law firm. We manage almost 700 of the fastest growing, most profitable law firms that anyone will probably ever see, hear of, or imagine. Um, the biggest challenge we have in marketing is people don't actually believe that what we do regularly is possible. Um, but... 10 years ago, I was flat broke. Um, and and I, I, I think it's important. I, I like to tell both bookends of that story mm -hmm. um, because I, 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 I like to tell people that like literally if, if I could do this, if I could go, be, go from being flat broke in 2008, 2009 to, you know, Inc. 5,000, nine years in a row, 30 plus million dollars in revenue, I mean, like anyone can do this. It, 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 it's anyone can build a million dollar law firm in about 36 to 48 months, literally from scratch, uh, regardless of practice area, regardless of what market you're in. Uh, I mean, there might be some 
bizarre, weird, you're living in the middle of Alaska with, <laughs> with, with nothing around you but reindeer. And, you know, even now with the internet, you could still do it. Um, the point I'm trying to make is I don't think people really care that much about me. I think people care about what how to manage can do for them. And so if you want me to tell you all about me, I'll be happy to, you know, indulge and 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 tell you all about myself. But I, I just think it's probably more important for the audience to know what how to manage can do for them. And a lot of what we can do for them and a lot of what we will do for them, we can do for free and we will do for free. Uh, we have an app that they can download for free. They all kinds of resources because we don't we don't we don't need to hide anything. You want me to tell you about me? I mean, you want to know where I grew up? I grew up in Miami. <laughs> well, I, I will say this. I have a dog. <laughs> it was Peanut. <laughs> well, so I appreciate that. Uh, and I think, um, we, you know, I really focus on on how to manage and, and what you do and how you can you can help these folks. And that's, that's what the show is all about. Um, and so just to kind of back up and give my perspective. So I'm in law firm marketing. So we're literally trying to help law firms grow, but we're on the outside, right? So we're, we're not able to control operational things. We're not able to control their sales processes. We're not able to uh, make them profitable necessarily. So, um, but what, what I do see, and so I have, I have a sheet. So if a, if a law firm calls me like, Hey, we're, we're interested to talk. I interview them. And I have about 40 questions that I ask them. What is your revenue? What's your average client uh, worth? Um, what is, uh, how many leads are you getting right now from different sources? What is your current agency engagement look like? Have you had multiple agencies? I just, we ask a ton of questions and I don't show them anything. I don't share anything. I don't walk them through a, a slide deck. It's the interview. It's a, are we a fit for you? Do we feel like we can help you? And are you in the right place with your business to be able to hire us and have a good relationship. And so what I'm getting at is if those questions that they just pull them off the top of their heads, like they have financial reports that morning, I know, and I'll say, Hey, are you part of any organizations like a mastermind or a group? And they're like, how to manage. And so I can pick them out of a group now very quickly, just because of the way they carry themselves, the things they're thinking about and, Every how to manage member that's a client of mine or a prospect knows their numbers. They know everything off the top of their head. And most business owners don't have a clue about any of that stuff and how it affects their, their business. So the testament to you all that if, if I see a how to manage member, I already know they're a how to manage member just by having a conversation with them. And so whatever y'all have done and the systems you've put in place and the help you've, you've put in place is very obvious when I talk. Well, I'll tell you what we do. Uh, and, and, and I'm happy to share this with your audience and I'm happy to share this with anyone. And I've been sharing the same thing. I've been standing on some soapboxes, preaching this stuff for 20 years now. Um, you know, I started off, I was being a little facetious earlier about no one really cares about me, but let me give a, just a smidge of background. <laughs> I'm bringing it back. Um, well, just a little bit, just because I think it gives some context. Um, I, I, uh, I went to law school basically because I didn't know what else to do. Cause I was just a total fuck up 23 year old who majored in partying and girls in college. Um, and I, I just needed a place to hide out. So I went to law school. Um, when I graduated from law school, I, um, started my own law firm. I, I worked for a federal bankruptcy judge for a little while. And then I started my own law firm and I, it, it was a disaster. I, I didn't know anything about marketing. I didn't know anything about sales. I didn't know anything about production, workflow processes, systems, procedures, mm -hmm. standardization. I didn't know anything about hiring, training, managing, making a profit with people. I didn't know anything about financial controls. I didn't know anything about physical plant. And I didn't understand that a law firm is a business, right? Um, Part of the way that I grew my business, this might shock you as a digital marketer, but I originally built my business, how to manage a small law firm. After I was broke, I had no money, I had no resources. So I just went and got in front of audiences and I got together with local bar associations all over the country 
and I would stand in front of these audiences and I would uh, talk about the business of running a law firm. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me back up. So I had my own law firm. It was a disaster. It was losing money. It was making me miserable. I was stressed out. I didn't see any hope. And then I discovered that the Florida Bar had a department called the Law Office Management Assistance Service. And the Law mm -hmm. Office Management Assistance Service was created back in 1980 when the president of the Florida Bar at the time, a guy by the name of Sam Smith, he realized that the bar was prosecuting more lawyers because of law firm management problems than any other reason. 54% oh, wow. of bar grievances filed nationally, by the way, and not coincidentally, 54% of malpractice actions filed nationally start off as a avoidable law firm management problem. The oh, wow. owner of the law firm doesn't really think of it like a business and so they don't treat it like a business. And so they don't put the processes and the systems and the procedures in place for it to run like a business. And so it runs over them and, you know, makes their life miserable and creates all kinds of problems. So there I was running my, my law practice and it was making me miserable. And I discovered the Florida bar had the, had the law office management assistance service. And I called them for help. And I told them the problems that I was having and they were able to very quickly and very easily uh, you know, I thought I was some special snowflake with some special problems. And no, well, you are, you are. No, I, I'm not. It's, 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 listen, I can't remember the last time someone brought me a new, interesting, novel, unique law firm management problem that I hadn't seen at least a hundred times before. And that's good news yeah. that no one wants to be the person they named the disease after. Right. What you want to do is you want to go to the doctor and you, and you want the doctor to say, oh, don't worry. We've seen this hundreds of times before. We know exactly what to do. You'll be back on your feet in no time. Don't worry about it. Right. That's the rational thing. Yeah. So they, they, they said, look, the problems you're describing are effects. They didn't say it in exactly these terms, but the problems you're having are effects. These effects are caused by certain actions or inactions. And if you'll change these actions, the effects will get better and take care of themselves. And so I did what they said to do. Things got better. I called them back and I said, here's my next problem. And they told me what to do. And I did it. Things got better. And I called and said, hey, I, now I have a new problem because the solution to the old problem created a new and better problem. What do I do now? Anyway, this went on for months and my law firm started to turn around and start to work for me instead of me having to work for my law firm. And I, I said to J.R. Phelps, who was the director of the Florida Bar Law Office Management Assistance Service at the time, I said, hey, listen, I'm having a lot more fun with the business side of my law firm than even the practice of law. And to make a very, very, very long story short, he ended up recruiting me and I became the first and still today the only lawyer in the history of the state of Florida to serve as a full-time small law firm management advisor. And so wow. I was there for almost four years. And it's a documented fact that during that time, I worked with over 9,000 law firms on every wow. aspect of starting, marketing, managing, buying, selling, you name it. If there's a way to screw up the way a law firm runs, <laughs> we've seen it, right? Um, and it's not like I'm so smart. I'm, I'm not like coming at this and saying, I'm smart and you're stupid. And that's why I know how to fix your problem. No, it's just that I've seen it over and over and over and over and over again. Right. And, and what you're saying too, it's, 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 it's not just like anomaly. It's like, it's, you know, the problems that they're, they're the same for every law firm. Look, if you go to the store and you buy one of those boxes to, to make a cake, right. And you follow the instructions on the box and you put in the egg and you put in the milk and you put in the water and you, you mix it up the way they say to mix it up and you put in the right size pan that they say to put it in and you stick it in the preheated oven at the right temperature that they say to preheat the oven and you leave it in the oven at for the right amount of time that they say to leave it in the oven for. Are you surprised when a cake comes out at the end? Is it like, <laughs> oh my God, how did that happen? It's, it's engineered. Perfect. <laughs> Look, law firms are very simple businesses to run. That breaks the heart of thousands of lawyers right now listening to this. Law firms are very 
simple businesses to run compared to an HVAC company, compared to a moving company, compared to a restaurant, compared to a shoe store, compared to any of these other kinds of businesses that if we're all being honest with ourselves, we know most lawyers look down on the people that own those businesses. Oh, mm. look at me. I'm special. I own a law firm. Yeah. Their businesses are more complicated to run than yours is. Law firms are very chain, equipment to run. I'm sorry. Yeah. I said supply chain, equipment, uh, all kinds of other. Uh... Oh my God. There's so many more moving parts. A law firm, let's start off with uh, let's start off with barriers to entry. There's way more barriers to entry to start a restaurant or an HVAC company or a shoe store than there are barriers to entry to start a law firm, right? Working capital. You need way more working capital to start and to continue running and growing an HVAC company, a restaurant, a shoe store, uh, a, a you name it, any other kind mm -hmm. of a business practically than a, than a, than a law firm, um, staffing complexities, right? The risks you run running a moving company, the risks you run running a plumbing company that goes in and fixes people's plumbing toilets in their house. The risks you run running a restaurant are way more dangerous and way more risky than the risks you run running a law firm. The profit margins of a law firm are when, when it's run even, even badly. When you run a law firm even badly, the profit margins are so much higher than the profit margins of almost any other kind of a business you can imagine that you can actually afford to run your business really badly with a law firm. <laughs> and it's still you get by, which is why more lawyers think that they're doing okay. Anyway, the point I'm making is law firms are very simple businesses to run. You put the right things in place. You keep the right things maintained and going. You get amazing results. You don't put the right things in place or you put them in place and then you neglect them. You're going to get predictably bad results. And, you know, it, it, that, this is why I, I say it's like I'm not a genius. My, we got an amazing team of professional law firm management advisors, CEOs who come in and they, they, they provide CEO services and COO services and CFO services and CMO services for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of small law firms all over the country. We're not geniuses. We just, it's just not that complicated if you know how to do it. And if you keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it, doing it day after day after day after day after day after day after, which is why lawyers don't do it because it gets boring. <laughs> we do the boring stuff. <clears throat> no, I mean, you're spot on. And, um, you know, it's, I do have guests on the show here that, you know, they run as a business, they fall in love with the business side. And, and I've had other, a lot of folks I talk to that I've had a guest or prospects that don't show up because they're tied to their desk. They've had the law firm for 30 years. They have an admin assistant and they're in court or running around like crazy. And there's, there's, they, they, there's, I don't know if there's anyone that can help them at that point, but they're just completely working six days a week, tied to their desk, that, not that scaling, we, not we help, we help hundreds of people like that every single year. Yeah. And I try to refer them to you, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those aren't like, those aren't like our favorite kind of people to work with, but we do help yeah. them hundreds of them every kind of year. Our favorite kind of person. Look, people come to us, people come to how to manage in two states, right? They come to us in a state of inspiration they come to us in a state of desperation. It's much more fun to work with someone who's coming to you inspired <clears throat> because they've sure. had a taste of success and they know what's possible. And they're like, help me, help me, <laughs> help me squeeze everything I can out of this thing and use it to give myself and my family a better life. And of course, we also work with people who are desperate and they're like, I can't keep doing this anymore. I don't know what to do. I don't see light at the end of the tunnel. Just help me. Either way. Uh, yeah, the, the, the worst people to work with are those ambivalent people in the middle, which by the way, there's a piece of marketing advice for every lawyer listening to the podcast or watching the podcast. Your ideal clients are probably coming to you in a state of inspiration or a state of desperation. The ambivalent people in the middle will suck the profits out of your law firm and make you miserable. Yep. hundred percent. And, and that's the same for my kind of client. Like, 
it's hard for me to help someone in desperation, even though you want to, but it's, this might not be possible for, for us to do, but you can help them. Why can't you help them? them to, you how to manage, Kevin, you, know? you can hundred percent help someone in a state of desperation. If they're really okay. desperate, I think the problem is they say they're desperate, but they're not really desperate. Yeah. See, a desperate person is willing to heed the advice, what we call taille astuya. <laughs> taille astuya means take all your excuses and shove them up your ass. Just <laughs> fucking do this. Let it work for you. A person who is not desperate enough, what they're going to do is they're going to say, well, explain to me how this works. You don't need to know how it works. I mean, do you do you know how the anti-lag brake system on your car works? <laughs> no, you do not. Right? You do not know how the brakes in your car work. And yet you get in your car every day with your family and you drive and you expect them to stop and you rely on them. Do you know how the lights work in your house? No, you flip the switch and the lights go on. There's a million things in your life you depend on for your life. And you don't have a clue how it works. And you don't but need to. You don't need to. You need to know that it works. And you need to know that if it doesn't work, it's not really going to do you any damage, right? So you do a small test and you get a little result and it works. And then you reinvest a little bit of time and energy and faith and hope and trust and belief and some money. And then it works a little bit better. And so you reinvest and it works a little bit better and you reinvest and it works a little bit better. You can help desperate people. I think that you... Sure. I think that when someone says they're desperate and they give you all those excuses, they're not really desperate. Yeah. Well, they, they become harder to work with, I think, in that state, that state of mind that they're in, you know? Well, that's I the key to all of this is, you know, really, if you boil it all down, how to manage a small law firm is primarily a personal development business for entrepreneurs who happen to to own law firms. And that I think is really what sets us apart. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, we'll, I guess we'll take bets on how long it takes before a bunch of people are out there saying that they're doing, you know, mindset work or personal development for entrepreneurs. Right. But um, that's what we do. We, 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 we've always been a personal development business for entrepreneurs who own law firms. And then we come in and we put in the, the marketing the marketing systems and the sales systems and the operational systems and the staffing systems and the financial control systems and the dashboard so you can track and know what's going on in your business, you know, so you, to help you go away for 30 days with emergency access only, which is really what we try to achieve with our, with our members. But um, really it's all yeah. about mindset. Cause if you, yeah, how many lawyers listening right now would like to uh, disappear for 30 days and totally do it. And your law firm totally, still runs 100% totally doable. You can you can take the worst shit show imaginable and you can get it to the place where you can be away for 30 days with emergency access only. And while you're away, the marketing's still working. Sales is still converting prospective clients into paying clients. The work's still getting produced. You're still got revenue coming in. The bills are still getting paid. The staff is still being uh, managed and, and, and controlled. The, 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 firm is still profitable. Clients are still being served. Clients are happy. And you get a dashboard while you're away to know that everything's working the way it should be working. And that's why we say away with emergency access only. And if there's an emergency, you'll know there's an emergency. You get up off the beach, you go to the business center, you solve the emergency, you go back to your family. Um, or, you know, a lot of our members, what they do is they take that 30 days off with emergency access only, and they work on the business for a month and then bam, take it to the next level. And that's really nice. fun too. Well, uh, a good example. <clears throat> you were just in Paris for how long? I was, I was gone for that whole trip for 45 days. Um, about a month of it was Paris. Sure. Then okay. we went to California. Yeah. But uh, how many emergencies did you have to respond to? Or <clears throat> I know you were working on the business. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, emergencies, none. Uh, and, and by the way, that trip, there were no emergencies. I don't want to pretend like I don't have to. <laughs> Listen, I was in the jungle. Case point, I knew you went on that trip and I know, you know, so that's proof that, you know, you, you can go away. You can get this to happen. It can work. Oh, I only work 
in my business about 90 days a year. The rest of the time, my business is running for me without me, except on an emergency basis. If there's an emergency, I step back in. Got it. Yeah. So how many folks listening would like to, to be at that point, right? So, you know, and, and my, you know who my favorite people to work with are? My favorite, favorite, favorite people to work with are uh, expectant first-time moms. I love working with expectant first-time moms. They come to us and they're like, I just got pregnant. I, in nine months, I got to take a real maternity leave. They are ready to take all their excuses, shove them up, shove them up their ass, and just get it done. And in nine months, bam, we can make things happen. Those are my favorite people to work with because they yeah, don't make excuses. They had a real strong, powerful motivation to get it done. They got a timeline, right? They got to, uh, they got to meet it. So yeah, that's, that's a good, that's interesting. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Kid having a kid will smack you in the face real quick. <laughs> so absolutely. Yeah. So what, um, you know, actually, so with how to manage, you know, we have a lot of clients. I was telling Arjun, we have a lot of clients that are members and, um, and, and they hold our feet to the fire. They're, they're, you know, they got their shit together. And we've worked with a lot of your CFOs, CEOs, CMOs directly um, on calls with our clients. And so, you know, how to manage has got these expert people sitting there with these, with you as a law, uh, law firm, you know, looking over these things and walking you through the process and, and putting these things in place. So it's not just, uh, a DIY type of situation here. And, and we do have DIY solutions also, but I just want to say, uh, you know, because you're nice enough to have me on your podcast. So I'll give you a plug, which by the way, Kevin did not ask me to say this, but I will, um, you know, if the report that I got back from our CEOs and our CFOs and our CMOs was that array sucks, I would not have accepted the invitation to be on the podcast. <laughs> Well, I appreciate that. I really do. Um, well, because we get a lot of invitations. And the first thing I do is I talk to my team. I'm like, what do you know about this company? And they're like, oh, no, don't go there. Yeah, because it looks like you're you're somewhat promoting some, for some reason. Yeah. I just yeah, don't and, want to be associated I, with people who don't do good work. I appreciate that. And um, and that means a lot. I, I really appreciate that. And, you know, but again, you know, how to manage. We When we have a member of this, how to manage, we know it. I know it before they even walk in the door. And uh, they just carry themselves differently. Again, they know their numbers. They know everything. It's like they've been trained. You know, they're just a I totally cannot. different person. They have you been know? trained. You know, James Grant um, out of Georgia. Uh-huh. Um, he's a member. Yeah, he's, um, I know Jimmy Grant. Yeah, yeah. J yeah, Jimmy. Um, he was on. I don't know all of our members, but I know Jimmy. <laughs> I wouldn't expect you to know all of them. Um, but Jimmy, what an awesome story he's got. And um He's so he's dialed into it and uh, he's got a unique business model um, doing some really cool things. And, and he's like, man, he's like, I'm not, I'm, I wasn't smart. I didn't do well in school. He's, he's like, I don't even deserve to be where I'm at. He's run a law firm like a business. He does and deserve he, to be where he's at. That's the thing. You he deserve that, to be yeah. where you're at. Yeah. But you deserve to be where you're at. If you do look. Successful law firms are successful because the owners of successful law firms do the things that cause law firms to be successful. Unsuccessful law firms are unsuccessful because the owners of unsuccessful law firms either refuse to do the things that successful law firm owners do, or they do a bunch of dumb shit that causes their law firms to remain unsuccessful. Having a successful law firm has nothing to do with where you went to law school. It has nothing to do with how hard you work. It has nothing to do with how smart you are. It has nothing to do with, you know, whether whether you were, you know, the, the, the right race or the right came from the right place or you love a certain way or it's got nothing to do with any of this stuff. It's very, very, very mechanical. And this breaks the heart of thousands and thousands of lawyers when they hear this it's but very I love it. that's awesome right there that is just the best thing i've heard all day that that is 100 percent. like that's it and i think a lot of these lawyers are like well just do good work put your head down and the law firm will prosper that's not what causes law firms to be successful so i told you i, I built my business originally uh I, so i was with the florida bar 
I, I had learned, I'd worked with thousands and thousands and thousands of law firm owners. I mean, it's a documented fact in bar records. Um, I, I was something of a, of a well-known authority in a very small world of small law firm management. Um, I, 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 then, then my wife got sick and because I had failed to follow my own advice about creating processes and systems and procedures and all the stuff we, we teach our members to do now and help our members to do now, because I'd failed to follow my own advice, when Allie got sick, my whole practice fell apart, like really fast. And we lost our house to foreclosure and, you know, we went broke and, you know, I mean, it was bad. Like I literally was scraping up money to buy groceries some weeks and that's not an exaggeration. Hmm. And it's because I didn't do the things that owners of successful businesses do. And I did the things that owners of unsuccessful businesses do. And um, then I went out and I got on the national CLE speaking tour. So Microsoft, LexisNexis, mm-hmm. LawPay, Ruby Receptionist, they sponsored this national speaking tour. They, they, I went on the road and, and basically taught thousands and thousands and thousands of lawyers with local bar associations and law schools about the business of running a successful law firm. And um, I forgot where I was going with this. I had a point. I totally forgot my point. You said something. Well, you basically, um, I think we were, um, we were talking about, well, I was talking about Jimmy Grant and, uh, you know, being smart enough or um, what was I talking about? This is how they well, know the show's not scripted. <laughs> this is not. Because I totally well, forgot. I'll, I'll bring it an I was going to make a really good point, too. <laughs> It was going to, oh, well, this, that, now I said, you this lost everything. Is. Now I remember. Now I remember. So I was on the, so I was, so I was, you got to put that down. It's distracting the shit out of me. I'm sorry. You can go <laughs> and do it outside, but doing it there. My tech guy who set up all the lights and everything, he's sitting there watching, which is fine, but he's like checking his phone. It's like distracting the shit out of me. <laughs> um, this is all part of the script. I, pr- I promise. I had an assistant years ago and she would take notes on her phone. She's a, what I refer to as a fucking millennial and she would take notes on her phone and it would drive me insane because I'm old school, right? I'm 52 years old. So, uh, so she, she'd be like, look, I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes. This is all business. I'm not checking my email or text or whatever. And I'm like, I know, but you got it. It just drives me crazy. Anyway. That's um, why when I do interviews with, uh, with attorneys that are prospects, because if, if I'm on my phone on a video call with you, you'd be like, what the hell are you doing? Right. I'm taking notes for real. (laughs) This is a pet peeve of mine. And and it's ironic because one of my biggest pet peeves are people who have pet peeves. But anyway, the point I'm making, I remember remember the point of the story. The story was I used to go and and I'd be in front of, you know, lawyers, like 100 lawyers at a time in the national CLE speaking tour. And I asked them a question. And the question is, what's the business of a law firm? And I was in front of thousands of lawyers over the couple of years that I was doing the national CLE speaking tour. And after I only got like 23 correct answers, thousands of lawyers, only 23 correct answers. Nowadays I get correct answers all the time because people watch my videos, but there was a time where like no one ever heard of me and I only got 23 correct answers. What's the business of a law firm? And the problem is lawyers confuse the job of a lawyer with the business of a law firm. And, and I say, okay, well, and, and they say, well, the business of a law firm is to protect people's rights. The business of a law firm is to enforce the law. The business of a law firm is to help people with their legal problems. The business of a law firm is to make clients happy. The business of a law firm is to, someone would always be a smart out. The business of a law firm is to make money. No, that's not the business of a law firm either. <laughs> and I say, well, what's the business of a restaurant? What's the business of a, of a hotel, right? The business of a hotel is to rent rooms. Mm -hmm. The Ritz Carlton and the Motel 6, they're in the same business because they're both in the business of renting rooms. Now, the Ritz Carlton uses one strategy and the Motel 6 uses a different strategy, but they're both in the same business, right? Did we rent more rooms at a lower cost of rent of acquisition (laughs) and a lower cost of goods sold to deliver the service? The business was more profitable. 
right? What's the business of a restaurant? The business of a restaurant is not to serve food. I serve food in my house all the time. That doesn't make me a restaurant. The business of a restaurant is to sell food. That's the business of a restaurant. Ruth Chris Jake House, McDonald's, both in the same business, right? They're both mm -hmm. in the business of selling food. They have different strategies. They serve a different avatar. Different processes. Different yeah. processes, different product, but still the same business, right? If you went to the owner of a Ruth Chris Steakhouse and you said, listen, if you'll, if, you'll, if you'll install plastic tables and chairs and bolt them to the floor and put a playpen out back, you'll sell more $100 steaks. That's something maybe we should consider, right? <laughs> but it's a yeah. different business model. So the problem is most lawyers who, by the way, in, 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 to let everyone off the hook, you know, I went to law school too. And they didn't teach me anything in law school about the business of running a law firm. They didn't teach me how to market legal services. They didn't teach me how to sell legal services. They didn't teach me how to sit down and document processes and systems and procedures so that my law firm could efficiently, consistently, predictably, profitably, and professionally deliver a high quality work product, even when I'm not there because I'm on a way for emergency access only. They didn't teach me how to hire, train, manage, and make a profit with staff. Even if I took, I didn't happen to take, but even if I took employment law classes, they don't teach you that in employment law classes on how to hire, train, and manage and make a profit with staff. They didn't teach me financial controls. They don't teach us in law school about the business of running a law, uh, the business of running a law firm. The, law school is a trade school. Law school teaches you the trade. They teach you how to do the job of a lawyer to work for the owner of a law firm who runs the business of a law firm. So the business like of how to weld, firm, right? It's a trade. The business you know of how law to firm, do the weld, not to run a, a welding company. <laughs> I'm sorry. Say again. I'll say it's just like if you're, you were taught how to weld, right? Yeah. You get to learn the trade of welding. It doesn't mean you know how to run a welding company. Right. So exactly. Welding was going to be my next example. <laughs> That was part of the script I have right here. So yeah, welding. Make sure we talk about welding. Um, so um, I'm laughing because I actually do know how to weld. <laughs> well, I actually want to get a welder, and I, I build stuff all the time. And that's the next thing on my list as well. So after uh, the podcast is over, let's get on a Zoom, and I'll take you into my basement. I have a whole. I used to sculpt with scrap metal. Oh, and, cool. And I have, and with with a with a with a TIG welder, and then I used a oh, wow. yeah, and a blowtorch. Well, you're, we're gonna save that for another episode. Uh, yeah. Welding with Arjun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in my bookshelf here somewhere, I've got like all my welding books. But anyway, oh, it's cool. Um, yeah. The point I'm getting at here is, the business of a law firm is not the same thing as the job of a lawyer, and this is really how we're able to transform the performance so quickly is because we change the mindset of the owner of the law firm and, and and most of our members if you talk to them if they've been with us for any length of time and i'm sure if, if you ask jimmy you say what do you do and they're gonna say i'm an entrepreneur <laughs> right yeah i'm an entrepreneur and i own a business and the business that i own happens to be a law firm the business of a law firm for everyone who's listening, so I don't want to leave you on a cliffhanger and 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 hide this. The business of a law the, the the business of a law firm is to sell, deliver, and get paid for legal services. The business of a restaurant is to sell food. The business of a rest of, of a of a hotel is to rent rooms. The business of a law firm is to sell legal services and deliver, obviously. That's the business of the law firm. To do that, the owner of the restaurant needs to hire a chef or maybe a cook. To do that, the owner of the hotel needs to hire a desk clerk. They need to hire a maintenance person. They need to hire a housekeeping staff, right? The owner of the, of the law firm has to hire a lawyer to work for the law firm to sit in the kitchen cooking up the services that get sold by the server 
in front of house. I'm obviously mixing up analogies to make the point here. I love it. <laughs> and the sooner that everyone listening to this podcast can stop thinking of yourself as a lawyer and start thinking of yourself as being the owner of a business that sells legal services, shift your mindset, the sooner your law firm, I promise you, will start to be more profitable and start to work for you instead of you having to keep working for your law firm. Yeah, I, 100%. <laughs> Here's one of the biggest things that I see um, with issues or, or mindset shift when, I, when I'm talking to, to the lawyers. I've talking, you know, spoken to many lawyers that are in the, in the understanding that it's unethical to scale or grow or market it's referral only. Uh, that's, you know, I'm all about the law and I'm, I'm by the book. And so, wait, but I, what when you I asked them, like, you, Kevin, you what are you, Kevin, what are you, what are you saying? I, I, I feel like I, I feel like I lost track of this conversation. What are you saying? So sometimes I'm talking to attorneys that are in the mindset that there's, they have integrity as a lawyer. They don't want to market. They don't want to grow because that's not the way they should be running a, a business. Can I speak? Can I speak like in our John language? You can. Yes. That's the dumbest fucking thing in the world. And I agree. So with you. idiotically <laughs> hypocritical and self defeating, and so completely fucking unprofessional. It's so unprofessional. Lawyers have an ethical obligation to market our services. If we I give totally a agree. shit about our profession, then we have an ethical <laughs> obligation to market our services. And you have a professional responsibility to run your law firm profitably. It is unethical to run your law firm unprofitably. And it is our prof and it is our ethical professional responsibility to market our services. Because you know what? There is millions and millions of people out there. And I can prove this. I can prove this. There are millions and millions of people out there who are unserved by the legal community because they don't know a lawyer. They don't know anyone who knows a lawyer. They don't know how to find a lawyer. And so they're just getting screwed over and screwed over and screwed over and screwed over in life because no one is putting legal services in front of them. That's what marketing is. Marketing is when you educate prospective new clients to help them understand that they have a problem they don't even know they've got. You're not causing the problem by shining a light on the problem. And then show them how they can begin taking steps to make their life better. That's what marketing is. And mm -hmm. there's millions of people out there whose lives could be improved if only a lawyer cared enough to do some marketing to educate them to show them how they can have a better life. Amen to you, brother. Um, so <laughs> don't even get me started. It's a whole different <laughs> podcast on these lawyers who run unprofitable law firms and yeah. commit. I mean, running an unprofitable law firm is fraud. It's fraud in the inducement when you have an unprofitable law firm with no business plan and you fraudulently induce a, po a person to do business with your law firm when you have no plan for how the law firm will stay in business long enough to finish delivering the service that you've sold them on. You get 100%. And, then not, and, and then to take it to your staff and your family and everyone else that's affected by it if it's going into the ground, right? Listen, who gives a shit about your family and your staff? I'm talking about, I'm being facetious, right? I'm talking <laughs> about the lawyers who want to like throw themselves on the sword and be like, oh, look at me, I'm ethical and professional and I'm above marketing and I'm above pecuniary gain. And they're totally oblivious to, to, to the effect on their clients mm -hmm. when they run an unprofitable law firm. No client wants to hire an unprofitable law firm if the client were to be told the truth. If, 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 if this is part of the reason that I don't get invited back to a lot of podcasts and why I don't, <laughs> why I didn't get invited back to a lot of speaking engagements, because I would stand there in bar associations all over the oh. country. And I would, and I, and I would, I would walk lawyers through this logical process of thought and they would reach the inevitable conclusion that they were running a fucking Ponzi scheme and they should actually be disciplined by the bar because of how they run their law firm and how they fraudulently induce their prospective new clients to do business with their law firm. 
It's fraud. Well, you said 54% at the Florida bar was due to mismanagement of the law firm. Listen, what's it called when you, when you, what's it called when you, and your audience should know this. What's it called when you misrepresent or leave out material factors to induce a person to do business with you? Kevin, it, it, no, no, no. That's not malpractice. That's called fraud in the inducement. <laughs> fraud in lawyer. the inducement. You <laughs> induce a person to do business with you by either actively misrepresent facts or you don't disclose facts that you know are material to their decision. Yeah? That's fraud in the inducement. You're going to go buy a car, Kevin. The owner of the car knows something about the car, which if you knew this about the car, they know you wouldn't buy the car, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So they don't tell you about this problem that the car's got and you buy the car. That's fraud. That's called fraud in the inducement. There's a cause of action that lawyers sue people for all the time because of this exact fact pattern. You get it? Yeah, most law firms do it themselves. Well, imagine you've got a prospective new client, right? You've hired Array Marketing and Array Marketing has gotten you all these leads and you've listened to advice on how to convert the leads uh, with, with, with a good intake system and the prospect of new client has scheduled the appointment. And then you've got a good system in place to do a, what we call a glide path to get them ready for the appointment so that when they arrive to the appointment, they're already preconditioned, pre-educated and predisposed to want to hire your firm. And you have the sales meeting with them and they say, great, I want to hire your firm. And you put the engagement agreement in front of them and they pull out the pen to sign it. And you say, hold on a second. I need to disclose some things to you so you have all the facts before you make this decision to hire my firm. And they say, oh, what's that? And you say, well, number one, I have no business plan and I don't really have any idea how this thing's going to stay in business a year from now other than hoping for the best and I'm willing to work hard. Number two, I have no financial controls and I don't really know where the money is coming from or where the money is going or how this thing is, whether this thing is really profitable or not. Number three, I have no documented processes, systems, or procedures so that if something were to happen to me, I don't know how any of these services would get delivered to you. So, you know, pretty much we just have to hope hope that I don't get hit by a bus. Uh, number four, uh, I am stressed out beyond fucking belief because of the cash flow roller coaster that I live on. And I'm 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 spending the weekends scrubbing my own toilet and mowing my own lawn and arguing with my family over cash flow and financial problems. And uh, I'm walking around uh, broken hearted because I can't send my kid to the great college that my kid got into because my law firm runs so unprofitably. And I'm literally like div driven to distraction sometimes because of all these problems. And I've got no standards that I can hold my staff to. And I've got no recruiting system in place. And I've, Who's going to hire that law firm? <laughs> no one. Keep your mouth shut. Have them sign the engagement agreement, knowing that if they knew the truth, that you were really going on your business, they wouldn't hire your firm. That's called fraud, the inducement. Anyway, this is what gets me not invited back to podcasts and not invited back to bar associations to do CLE talks because I speak this truth. It's true. And this is when lawyers go around saying, you know, oh, you know, it's uh, it's unethical to market. It's unethical to run your law firm like a business. It's unethical not to run your law firm like a business. Unless, of course, you are making disclosures to your clients, which I know you're not, because if you made the disclosures to your clients, no one would hire you. Spot on. And you're welcome now back. Now you've lost time. half of your audience. I'm sorry. They all tuned out and unfollowed your podcast. <laughs> That's fine. And You're speaking you the truth, and I appreciate it. Sorry? No. Well, the, the right audience that engages with us, because we believe in everything that you believe in, will take a lot from this. And they... I listen to your podcast. I, I, I know that I can say these things to your audience, because your audience is better <laughs> than most podcast audiences 
who don't want to hear the truth. Yeah, hopefully they're not, you know, if they're tuning in on this podcast, they they should have a freaking good idea. Um, so I uh, you're totally fine. Welcome back anytime. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate you speaking the truth. I really do. And and that's something that I see all the time. And you know, I can't beat up my prospects necessarily sometimes on it, but it's I see that a lot. And actually, I was talking to this one young is an older lady, and she wanted to work with us, but just she's really in a tight spot, making like 150, maybe uh as a firm. Yeah, gross she's revenue making- of 150,000 a year, and she's probably taking maybe she's taking a hundred thousand a year out of the firm. May if she's probably, lucky. Right. And she's probably working 60 or 70 hours a week is the problem. And if she would work less, she'd actually make more. And here's the double irony. She'd actually help a lot more people. That was what I got to. So she was telling me, well, I, I don't want to do much because, you know, I, I really am passionate. She was bringing all this passion and how she was helping, um, uh, it was like uh, civil rights in our community, helping people. And she was so passionate about helping. She's like, I got to go. I got a client I got to meet with. And and I, I want to market maybe, but I'm not sure. And I started talking to her. And about a week or so later, she called me back and said, hey, um, I was like, I was like, listen. You right now, you can help just a couple people. And you're telling me it's a big impact. What if you were to help hundreds of those people, thousands of those people, and you can lead the charge and, and grow and in building that. And and it, she, you could see that she was like, wow, that makes so much more sense. <laughs> it's like you're not helping enough people. You know, you're getting one client a month right now. It's not enough. If you really want to have a positive impact on the world, have a big impact on the world. And the only way to have a big impact on the world is to scale up your law firm. Ooh, how about that ending, huh? Oh, so good. If you enjoyed this today, stay tuned next time for part two. And if you haven't grabbed your copy of this book yet, head on over to ProfitFirstForLawyers.com and order your copies today. See you next time. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Profit First for Lawyers. If you're enjoying what you're hearing, tell a friend. And buy your copy of the book at ProfitFirstForLawyers.com. Your future self will thank you for it. And we will see you next time.